Welcome Cryptopians to Total Crypto Updates, bringing you another video for real deep dives into the crypto industry. I can't promise to only speak about crypto, but I can promise everything will be overstood. Let's dive into today's very dense crypto update. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, a non-regulatory body of the United States Department of Commerce, issued a first public draft emphasizing the numerous security issues in connection to the architecture and implementation of stablecoins. These are the five stablecoins. FRAX USDC USDT BUSB DAI All five tokens were coincidentally tied to the US dollar during the course of the research with a mean minimum value of $.9934, minus 0.66%, and a maximum minimum value of $.9871, minus 1.29%. The third largest stablecoin by market value at the time of the research, TerraUSD, USD, which lost its peg in May 2022, experienced a death spiral, was also noted by NIST. The paper mentions a number of security issues, such as collateral theft, smart contract flaws, data oracles, arbitrary or illegal minting, and manipulating the underlying blockchain. According to NIST, centralized finance CEFI, architectures are more vulnerable to trust issues due to a greater reliance on human trustworthiness, while decentralized finance DeFi, is typically more vulnerable to security issues due to increasing smart contract code complexity and critical functionality. Now for some brief yet positive Cardano news. A new social media survey reveals that the Cardano ADA, smart contract platform is the one that the cryptocurrency community is most interested in staking above other proof-of-stake networks, receiving thousands of votes in favor of it. Blockchain.com a Bitcoin exchange and wallet service, performed the survey. Rewards from card ANO staking are distributed in epochs, or generally every five days, and the system works in cycles. The network depends on staking pools to maintain an adequate number of node operators. Notably, as investors turn away from risky assets, its total value locked has lately fallen to an eight-month low amid a larger decline in the total value locked on cryptocurrency networks. Comment below if you'd like our team to explain the staking process in a later video. DeFi crime rings are being targeted all over the world right now. You should be very cautious about this space at the moment. The United States have been known to be very sensitive about lawbreakers but deliberately ignorant to reason. This means anyone who even brought these people a coffee will be investigated. Authorities in the United States and Brazil have dismantled a crypto fraud ring in Curitiba, Brazil, which is accused of moving up to 4 billion reis, $768 million, in transactions while misleading investors about crypto items that turned out to be mainly worthless. The United States investigation revealed that the organization allegedly deceived investors in more than a dozen countries by falsely claiming that they had developed fully functional, cutting-edge cryptocurrency-related financial products, according to U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE. In actuality, the group is accused of touting false partnerships and permits, which were used to deceive victims into investing millions of dollars in the suspect's cryptocurrency. The cryptocurrency gradually lost their value. As part of the investigation, the Brazilian Federal Police obtained 20 search and seizure orders. ICE stated as part of an investigation known as Operation Poiais International Money Laundering, conducting a criminal business, fraud, and crimes against the national financial system are among the infractions. As investigators get closer to identifying Satoshi Nakamoto, the developer of Bitcoin v1, Jim Blasco claims to have discovered raw data and files from Bitcoin version 0.1, including notations from Satoshi Nakamoto. Blasco said on Facebook on October 7 that he discovered code going back to before Satoshi went public with Bitcoin by doing some browser hacking on open source software development site SourceForge, where the cryptocurrency was registered in November 2008. 
He said that it took the BTC founder six months to mine 1 million coins, because Block 20,000 wouldn't occur until July 22, 2009, and others like Hal Finney were mining at the same time. Since 2012, it was assumed that the raw code and files had vanished. According to Wikipedia and a few other documents found on the Alcor's main website, Finney died in Phoenix, Arizona, on August 28, 2014, as a result of complications of ALS and was cryopreserved by the Alcor Life Extension Foundation. The document reads, Hal Finney, Alcor member A1436 who chose the whole body option, was pronounced legally deceased on August 28, 2014, at 8.50 a.m., at the age of 58, in Scottsdale, Arizona. That same day, Hal became Alcor's 128th patient. Hal, who has had cryopreservation arrangements with the Alcor Foundation for over 20 years, was Bitcoin's earliest ever adopter. He was the very first debugger and contributor to Bitcoin's code, and was the recipient of the first Bitcoin transaction in January 2009, receiving 10 Bitcoins from Bitcoin's possibly pseudonymous creator Satoshi Nakamoto. Prior to that, Hal was a lead developer on several console games, graduated from the California Institute of Technology with a B.S. in engineering, was a noted cryptographic activist, including running the first cryptographically-based anonymous remailer, and in 2004 created the first reusable proof-of-work system before Bitcoin. Hal is a rare genius who never had to trade his emotional intelligence to get his intellectual gifts, said Phil Zimmerman, the creator of Pretty Good Privacy, PGP, the most widely used email encryption software in the world. He is a fine human being, an inspiration for his attitude toward life. I wish I could be like him. Hal was diagnosed with ALS five years ago and placed on Alcor's watch list and then monitored over the years as his disease process continued to advance. He made it clear that once he lost the ability to communicate, he did not want his vital functions supported any further but should be allowed to cease functioning and promptly be cryopreserved. It was actually extremely reassuring as the reality of the diagnosis sunk in, Hal wrote in 2009. I was surprised because I've always considered cryonics a long shot. But it turns out that in this kind of situation, it helps tremendously to have reasons for hope, and cryonics provides another avenue for a possibly favorable outcome. Hal's long-stated wishes were to come to Scottsdale once he lost the ability to communicate with family and friends. When that time arrived, he was flown to Scottsdale by air ambulance with his wife, Fran, at his side. Hal and Fran Finney arrived in Scottsdale, Arizona on Tuesday, August 26, where Hal was checked into ICU of a hospital near Alcor where the Alcor response team was set up and waiting. After the family had a chance to say their goodbyes, Hal's ventilator was disconnected and he was allowed to breathe naturally all while medical providers ensured that he had no conscious awareness of the process. Defying doctors' expectations, he didn't draw his final breath until 38 hours later, shortly before 9 a.m. on Thursday, August 28. Immediately after pronouncement of legal death, Alcor's standby team went into action, restoring circulation, ventilation, administering an array of medications, and initiating external cooling. Seroprotective perfusion, to eliminate ice formation, has been completed and HAL is now undergoing cool-down to minus 196 deg C for long-term storage where he be cared for until the day when repair and revival may be possible. HAL paid for his cryopreservation through a combination of life insurance and bitcoins donated by admirers. His wife, Fran, also has arrangements for cryopreservation. She is glad to have a chance to see him again sometime in the future, when they may return in restored and rejuvenated bodies. I will leave the, the link in the description to his actual published case summary by Alcor. On Friday, Bitcoin mining stock fell. TerraWolf was down 23.6%, followed by Argo Blockchain, minus 23.02% on Nasdaq, which announced intentions to raise $34 million earlier in the morning. Iris Energy fell 15.68% after stating in its monthly operating update that SAI.tech's shares had increased by 78.93%.
That will conclude today's update on trending news in the crypto world. Remember, the social media platforms will be up and running next week. With the last channel being deleted we must now start over. Don't forget we have a $50 giveaway for when we hit 200 subs and followers on all social platforms. We also raised the giveaway for 1,000 subs on YouTube to a $200 giveaway. Don't miss out, all you have to do is like, follow subscribe and tag as many people as you can. We will be watching who tags who in keeping tabs on which one of those tags actually followed and subscribed. I repeat, this is not a random drawing. Anyone can compute the giveaways themselves. Good day good night and goodbye.